guys, I'm just gonna keep powering through this BP base weapon class, but just remember after the weapon base class we will have all or nearly all of our base classes finished and then we can start building a real game instead of just uh, blueprinting 24-7. So with that said, open your project, we're working in the BP weapon base class and remember create your way. So we were uh, we were working on um, set weapon state and we, uh, we got all the way to play weapon animation um, through um, basically nested functions and so we were working on the first part of the sequence so what we need to do in here is we need to bring this structure our, um, our weapon animation structure over and we need to break it because that has the animations for our first and third person um, and yeah the animations for the first and third person and so what we're gonna do in um, in zero and one sequences is we're gonna go to branches probably a little further out but I'll just set it up for now our first condition is gonna be a both valid yeah I'm gonna bring this way out our first condition is gonna be a both valid And we're gonna check if um, object one is gonna be get anim instance of our third person mesh, and object two is gonna be the weapon third person animation. So we want to make sure that that animation instance and this animation instance are the same, or the they're both valid. Sorry. Um, and if so then we're gonna do a montage play from that animation so i'm actually going to reroute it somewhere like this i'm gonna go montage mon or rather yeah montage should be off of there montage play there we go, I don't know why I wasn't coming up. And um, the target is going to be the return value from up here. Let's rewrote that for some cleanliness. I'll rewrote this down here a little bit. I'll bring this up. Kind of keep it in line there. I like to do that. Keep this in line with these pins. Play rates one, and uh, that's that. Uh, then we want to do the second one, which is for the first person mesh, and we're going to do a montage play again. So we might as well just copy that into the true here. Um, so the condition here, we want to um, I'm gonna check if both valid, and the first object is going to be get anim instance. Oops, get anim instance first person mesh object 2 is going to be a weapon animation first person uh, maybe we can make that a little bit cleaner there and uh, if those are both valid then we play a montage that montage is going uh, is going to be the uh, weapon animation for the first person here so just plug that right in there maybe I'll bring this up and line that up and the target is going to be the return value here the first person uh, anim instance for that skeletal mesh just like so so uh, what we're doing here is we are playing playing the animations for both uh, third person and first person weapon meshes so that's what's going on there. Just gonna bring this in a little bit. See if I can't make it a little bit cleaner. See if we can't straighten this out. Control Shift S, perfect. Straighten this out. Bring this up. All right, I'm happy. So then for the last pin, uh, number two there. I feel like I have no screen space. Um, what we're going to do is this is going to be both, so we're going to reroute it. It's going to go from there. It's also going to go if owning pawn is not valid. So if the owning pawn is not valid, we don't want to go over any of this junk. We just want to skip straight to return. 
And so what we're going to do is we're going to bring our return node back and we're just going to simply return and we're going to return our local used anim duration. Like so. So that is that function. Um, I never commented this. What we're doing here is we are um, basically telling the pawn the animations to play. Um, and use the uh, pawn's animation as final used anim duration. So you can, you can see his anim duration is the final used anim duration. So let's compile that and save. We can now go back to simulate fire, which is where we needed that. So in simulate fire, we can now, um, we can call that, we can call uh, play weapon animation. And in web animation is gonna be, I don't know if we have it. Um, that would be under config animations. Yes, fire animation. Perfect. So just like that. And um, we don't have any fire animations set up yet, so I'll do it in the first person, but uh, I will be supplying all those once we get enough time going in. So that's the end of that. So that is, um, oh, come on. Why are you on the comment key breaks? Oh, come on. There we go. So uh, plays uh, firing weapon animation if it does not l loop or if it's the first time playing on this trigger pull or pool close enough. A chicken trigger pull. <laughs> Pardon my French. Uh, so next up, um, we need to do, we've got the muzzle flashes, we've got the animations. Next up, we want to do the sounds. So let's, uh, let's rewrote this one down. I'm going to pull this one over, I think, and bring all this over too. Just because so the way sequences like to work. And so this is going to go into a branch as well. Bring it all the way over here, maybe. And so what we're going to check here is we're going to check for B loop, not fire. Uh, OK, we'll need to create a new variable then. So that will be a new variable of type Boolean called B loop, looped fire sound, fire sound. There we are. That'll be under config uh, audio. It'll be editable, so you can change um, if the if the sound loops on this weapon or not. So yeah, of type boolean, that'll be fine. Its default is false, so it's fine just the way it is. So we can just throw that right on there. Um, so if true, we want to do an is valid. And that is valid is going to be our fire loop audio component. It's not that one, that's a sound cue. Fire loop right there, audio component. So that'll be what we want to check if it's valid or not. Is our fire loop audio component. Stick it up there. If it's not valid, then we want to play weapon sound. And the target is self and the weapon sound is fire sound, which we don't have. So we need to create that. So let's create a new variable called fire sound. So this is the sound cue that plays when the weapon fires. So it's of the type sound cue uh, reference. We want it to be editable because every gun is different. Obviously, this is under config audio as well. If you don't know how to do the nested uh, categories, that's just the, um, I don't even know the proper name for it, but the uh, the square line, the shift backslash um, key. And uh, 
let's I, I don't have a proper uh, sound but we can give it the default fire sound um, although that's fire fire I want like gunfire come on we have to have one from the first person okay well now that just bugs me what the heck does the first person sound uh, play when he fires audio first person weapon fired first person template weapon fire we need to make a sound cue out of that okay so that's what we'll do so we'll just save that so fire there we go all right so we'll compile and save and fire sound will go into the weapon sound and if false we also want to uh play what play what and, well, we just want to do this exact same thing actually, so I'm just going to copy paste. If false, we do the same thing. So, fire sound goes into both of them. And um, only up here, if uh, fire loop AC is not valid, then we play the weapon sound. Let's see if I can't stream this all out here. Um, we play the weapon sound, but then we have an audio component. So then we can set a fire loop audio component to the created audio component that that function does. So like, so, oh no, I wanted it more like that. All right, cool. So like that. Oh, whatever. Close enough. Um, yeah, so that's that. So what we're doing here is um, play weapon fire sound or set up a uh, fire looping sound component component if sound loops and is first time playing on this trigger pull. All right. Then we can go into the last one, where is we play some camera shake and force feedback effects if we uh, if we want them. So we are going to need. I don't think we have it made yet. Uh, and sequence, yeah, three and sequence. So that'll be the last one, the third pin there. Um, let's see. Let's pull it back. Let's see if we can't get this to fit in there. Something like that ought to work. Good enough. All right, so. Uh, number one, let's take in our owning pawn. I'm gonna close these off. Just get back to our default uh, variables. We're gonna take our owning pawn. We wanna check if it's valid purely. I don't know a proper way to say that. Using the peer function just takes too long. Um, so that's number one and then we will also want to go off of there and get casted controller that's a helper function from our base character um, and we want to take uh, the out con the controller out so who's ever controlling that only pawn we want to see if they're valid using the peer function that's number two let's give ourselves some more room here Um, lastly, we want to take that same controller out and we want to see if it's a local player controller. And that's our third um, Boolean in. So all of those, we're also going to need the controller out again, so might as well just reroute it and bring it way over here for when we need it. So if true, we're not going to do anything on false. If, if false, we just do nothing. Um, if true, we go into a sequence, and um, it has two pins, and the first one's going to be a branch, and we're going to need we're going to need a class, class, class. Actually, no, sorry, we're going to need a um, fire camera shake. It's going to be of type camera shake. 
and the class, I believe. I want this to be editable. This is under config effects. Uh, it's not replicated. Let's compile though, because obviously we can fill that in and we're gonna need to, we might, might as well create it now. Um, so where are we gonna put this, however? Um, trying to think, probably under the same place, I guess, would make sense. So we might as well go into weapons and right click, create a new blueprint class, camera shake, right there, select, and we'll call this BP uh, underscore uh, base weapon, fire camera shake because we'll, then when we make individual weapons somewhere else oh, I just realized I called this weapons <laughs> um, then we can create their own camera shakes but uh, let's create a base one so I know some good values for uh, firing just because I've done it so many times we're gonna want 0 0.2 um, 0 0.1 or then we're gonna want 0 0.1 and we're only gonna want rotation oscillation Oscillation, oscillation, os os oscillation. I don't know how to properly say it. <laughs> so pitch, yaw, and roll. Um, they're all going to be EO offset random, but we want 0 0.5 by 5 on all of them, except for the last one, we want 0 0.05. Because uh, obviously, you wouldn't want your screen to be rolling as heavily as the other direction. So 0 0.05 and five and then the rest should be fine so yeah that'll just be our um that'll be our base camera shake i've used it a hundred times for uh fire camera shakes so now that we have that created we can go back here and we can select that right in there and now uh, it'll be good to go so what we want to do is we want to drag this in and we want to check um is valid class we want to make sure that that is a valid camera shape class. We want to make sure it actually exists and it's in memory. So that's our condition in the branch. We're gonna need our fire camera shake again. So I think I'm gonna leave that up there and just bring this down here. And so what we want to do then, um, if true, is um, We're gonna want to do a. I believe this is a stock function. Client play camera shake. Yeah. So its target is player controller, and it replicates to the owning client from the server. So, um, if true, we go into here. Um, the target is that uh, that casted player controller that we got. This is the shake. The scale is gonna be one. Play space will be camera local and the rest is fine. Um, we're gonna do it again down here, so might as well plug it in. Or sorry, no, this is a client play force feedback down here. And the force feedback effect, we're gonna need to create that too. It's not looping, the tag is gonna be a weapon. I know that ahead of time. Um, so this is then one actually. We're gonna do an is valid. And if this is valid, um, we're going to go into here. Uh, the target is going to be that controller as well. Something like that. I don't like that that's like, so. Uh, yeah, I'll do that. Um, so the force feedback effect, we're going to need to create that variable. So uh, I don't know how many of you have worked with force feedback. It's easy to set up though. So we're just going to do uh, fire force feedback effect. This is gonna be of type force feedback effect reference. We want it to be editable. Uh, that we want it to go under config effects. And uh, by default, we'll leave it at none because you'd have to have a pretty, um, you have to know what you're doing to uh, set that all up, but we're gonna put it in place regardless because it's so easy. So we're gonna take that variable. We're gonna check if it's valid and then we're also gonna put that in as the force feedback effect because we're only gonna play it if it's valid. So that is that function there. So um, 
we can go um if um if owning pawn is locally controlled so if we're not the server or whatever like dedicated server or like basically if we're local and we want to see effects then play camera shake and do force feedback effects if present on this on the weapon because it wouldn't be this weapon since it's just the base class so that is that um i think that's everything because yeah we went backwards there's no false there i don't believe nope i think we're good so we got our category down in there visuals yep perfect all right and uh there's no output so we're good to go so let's compile and save i have that doing it at the same time i suggest you turn it on it it uh, prevents you having to hit control s so we were in handle firing that's the uh that's we had everything calling the handle firing function but we didn't have it set up so i said we might as well set it up so uh on false we were gonna simulate fire so um this right here we're just checking um um if dedicated server no reason to play fx um so after that we're going to want to go to true which is going to be a two and sequence check now we're going to check uh if our owning pawn i'm going to close this off again if our owning my want this all the way up here i wish i could save my layouts but that's uh, the bug in 410 um, i'm going to check my owning pawn i want to check if it is valid in the peer context again using the peer function whatever you want to call it and i want to check if it's locally controlled it is locally controlled that's what that's the two things we're checking um we're also going to do that if we play simulate fire so um Actually, I'm just going to reroute it right into there. That's what I'm going to do. That'll keep it clean. All right. So uh, if true, then we want to fire the weapon finally because we're handling fire, but I don't think we've created that. No. So we need to create our fire. Um, but don't worry. This one's very easy. We're just gonna go to our weapon state graph. We're gonna create a new custom event. Let's just copy this one. And we're just gonna call it fire and that's it. Because it's gonna be overridden um, on whatever weapon we're actually using. So I'm gonna comment this and um, so fire is declared as an event so it can be overridden instead of a function. It is called when the weapon actually fires. Um, at this point, you can shoot your bullet or spawn a projectile or a rocket or, uh, or ETC. So that's our fire custom event. So it, we're, we're creating it as a custom event so it can be overridden. And uh, you can override, as you can see, like on there. I can override tick, for example. So that's uh, every weapon is going to fire a little bit differently. Um, so yeah, now we can go back to handle firing. So if true, we fire. And then we need to consume ammo. So we need to create a new function for that. So let's create a function. I uh, counted or I made a brief look at my reference material. I think we're getting pretty close to finishing this class up, but uh, consume ammo. Not to say that some of these functions aren't huge. Um, so this one's under events again. It has no inputs and outputs. Um, so it goes straight into a branch where we check for infinite ammo. So again, certain uh, vehicle weapons will have infinite ammo, and sometimes you'll have cheats on, so we check uh, infinite ammo. Um, 
If true, we go into another branch. Um, if false, we set current ammo in magazine, which should be replicated, yep. And we want to set it to uh, get current ammo in mag um, minus, and I think we'll need a new variable, uh, consumed, yeah, the total consumed ammo per, uh, per shot. And so this will be a new variable. So it's going to be a uh, consumed ammo per shot. So some weapons might take up more than one ammo per shot. You never know. We want to build that in because we don't want to have to come in and edit everything later for something that is somewhat common. Um, so we want that to be uh, editable. It's going to be under config ammo. And uh, by default, we want it to be one, not zero. Otherwise, we could have infinite ammo. So minus that, it doesn't need to be replicated. Um, so we set the current ammo in magazine to however much we have minus however much we just consumed in this shot. Um, and then we go into this branch as well. Um, and this branch, uh, it goes into an or boolean, which checks if we um, either has infinite ammo, and we also want to check, uh, we are, we, we're going to have another one, uh, so let's just create a quick, this is an easy function, quick function, um, has infinite ammo, has infinite mag ammo. Um, and this just has a return, which is B infinite. And that's it. Just make sure it's peer and we're good to go. So that's for um, if you want to have reloading, but you don't want to have uh, your magazine ammo go down. So there's certain cases where you'd need that. So uh, we want to check has infinite mag ammo. So do we have infinite ammo period or do we have infinite magazine ammo? One or the other, but we still need to reload. Um, if, fall, if true, we do nothing. If false, we set current ammo, which is replicated to itself, get current ammo, minus consumed ammo per shot. So we set current ammo to that. And then this is going all wonky on me. Um, and then we need to create a new function. We need to add weapon fired stats. Luckily this one is sort of small um so we're gonna add a function called add weapon fired add weapon fired stats because we need some way to track when a weapon is fired and what we're gonna do um the player state's gonna have stuff to do like we're gonna say this player shot 600 bullets this round or whatever we're gonna have all that available um so we need an input an integer called ammo consumed um this is going to be under um stats and so we want to go into a three and sequence and we want to reroute ammo consumed because this is going to go over i don't think we have this function yet uh bullets nope That'll be another function we need to create. Um, so first we want to take our owning pawn and close all this off again. We want to check, of course, if it's valid. You always want to check if things are valid. Otherwise, you're just going to have bugs, 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 bugs. Um, you want to get the owning pawn's player state. That's just a default value. You want to check if it's valid. And you, then we want to cast to our player state. 
I want to check if it was successfully casted. So if that player state even exists. So that's our three uh, booleans to check. And if true, then we want to create a new function. Just want to make sure this one, yeah, it's stats, perfect. We want to create a new function called add bullets fired. And so that one's obviously going to get called there. But first, let's add its input, which is going to be an integer again called bullets. And this one's going to be under stats again as well. Whoops, stats. Let's go back and let's just throw it on there quick. Um, stats add bullets fired if true and then new parameter zero should be able to refresh that compile maybe should say bullets refresh refresh there we go bullets now we can compile all right so that function's done we can close that i believe anyway um so add bullets fire. oh what am i doing now um there we go add bullets fired all we do is i think we're going to need a new variable bullets yeah so let's create a new variable called bullets fired and that is an integer as you might have guessed and uh its default value is zero so we're good just the way it is so we're just going to set that two and we could probably you could probably do uh uh an int incrementer where you do uh int increment increment int but uh i've had problems with that in anyway, my bullets plus bullets fired goes into bullets fired so that's that uh so just compile And now we can go back. So, um, back to consume ammo. Except I did that totally backwards. That should have been on a player state. Whoops, my bad. So let's open our, uh, I hate when I do stupid stuff like that. Blueprints, um, BP player state right there. So the reason I was questioning, if we go back to weapon base and if we um, set current ammo and then when we consumed ammo, where is that? Consume ammo, oh, that's what we're on. And then we add bullets fired right here. Um, that one shouldn't exist here. That one should be on player state. That's why it was confusing me. So delete that add weapon fired stats that one is here that's the reason that was being weird to me add bullets fired should come from bp player state so let's delete that let's go to our player state and then we can actually create that function the proper way um, we can also go back here and we can delete bullets fired so in our player state let's add a variable called bullets fired of type integer just like that totally fine um and then we can create a function called uh add bullets fired which takes in a variable an integer called bullets and we take that plus bullets fired and then we set bullets fired that's why that was confusing me so we can uh this is under the stats category compile and save do 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 do, do. come on there we go we can go back here now we can drag off of bp player state and uh we can call add bullets bullets fired now it's making more sense to me so yeah bullets plugs into there compile and save and you're rocking and rolling so that one is done so now we can go back to consume ammo and we can plug that in so add weapon fired stats ammo consumed is consumed ammo per shot that just plugs right in there like so um 
Yeah. Um, if you create bots, you'll probably have a problem with this, but when we create bots, if we do, we will, uh, we will approach that problem when we get to it. So what we're doing here is, um, if infinite mag ammo, don't consume magazine ammo. If infinite any ammo, don't remove consume any ammo. Ammo is what we're doing there. So compile that and save, and we can go back to handle firing. Um, so we fired, and then we're consuming an ammo, whatever an ammo might be. It might be one rocket. It might be three rocks. I don't know. Whatever it won't whatever it'll be and then we need a new replicated variable called flash counter and so this is an integer um, it's going to be a rep notify it's good default is going to be zero so what flash counter is used for is um, when the what uh, when the weapons fired um, it gets incremented and when the weapon stopped firing so when you stop holding down the trigger or whatever, then it gets set back to zero. And so this is, and that's what we'll do in the rep notify uh, function. And so this is just used for replicating uh, weapons easier. So we're gonna set that, saving out of date package is weird. Um, so we're gonna set flash counter, set with notify I should say, to itself plus one, we're incrementing. And then um, in its function we'll, is where we'll set it back to zero for not firing. All right, so we um, this is this whole thing here is fire uh, weapon. So let's comment. So fire weapon. Let's bring this over so it's separated. And so under false, um, we need this. We need to be able to reload if we can. So we're going to go into a branch. So if false, I'm going to bring this down so we can do this above it. So um, we check can reload. If true. I don't think we have this one either. Start reload. Nope. So we're going to need another function. Oh, you guessed it. This one isn't too bad, but it's a function that's obviously needed. So let's create a function called start reload. And um, this has a Boolean called B. Uh, replicated sometimes you want your reloads replicated sometimes you don't so that's why we need a, the boolean this is under events um, so we go into a branch and we want be replicated to be reroded because we're gonna need it might as well just bring it all the way over here um, the condition for the branch is can reload. If we can't reload, there's no reason in starting re the reload sequence. Um, if true, we go into another branch. Its condition is uh, an and boolean. We want to check. Actually, I can just stick it in here. Why not? We want to check if um, is server. So I want to make sure we are the server and that we have authority. So it has authority. This actor has authority rather. This weapon has the authority to start the reload. Um, sometimes you don't have the authority to reload, such as another player reloading another player. They don't have the authority. Um, if that is true, then we go to our weapon state graph. And we create a new custom event called client start 
reload. And this is multicast and reliable. And it has an input called B skip owner. And so we might as well fill this one out since it's pretty easy. Um, let's rewrote B skip owner. And so what we do is we do a switch off. And if we are remote, since this is client, we go into a branch. Condition is an AND Boolean. We check um, if we are B skipping owner. And if owning pawn is locally controlled, aka client side. So if so, um, or if false, however, then we um, start reload. And B replicated goes into B uh, skip owner, like so. Oops, I hit save instead of straighten. Bring that all up over whatever and uh, yeah so let's uh, compile let's go to start reload and so if true we call client start reload call the function and b skip owner is based on b replicated so just whoops Plug that in there, make it nice and clean. If false, however, um, well, we're gonna set, um, we also need a local variable while we're at it, which is gonna be L underscore anim reload duration, which is gonna be a float, oops. Oh, whoa, it's gonna, whoa, I did it again. It's going to be a float of the value zero, not a name, float, I can't click apparently today. So we have that local variable. Um, so if true, we set B pending, no, or I need to create that variable. So create a variable called B pending reload. This is a Boolean going to be uh, replicated it's going to be transient it's going to be zero filled at load and it's going to be false so that's fine just the way it is so we're going to set that to true so a reload is pending when this is all happening uh, if false a reload is still pending like so whoops line those uh, pins up And then we want to determine the weapon state. So are we reloading? So determine weapon state. And then we uh, play weapon animation. And the in weapon animation is reload, which we don't have. So let's make a new variable called reload anim. And we don't have that animation set up yet, but that is going to be um, of the variable type swep anim. So that structure it's going to be editable, obviously per weapon. It's going to be under config animations. Um, so we have fire and reload animation set up there. Um, yeah, I don't think we have any yet. Uh, stock animation for that. I'll check quickly, but uh, first person maybe. No, just the fire montage. No reload. Um, but we'll still plug it in there because we'll set that up eventually. Um, and then we take the anim duration and we want to do a few things. We want to check if it's less than or equal to zero. And that goes into a select float. Um, 
B is the anim duration, and A is, I don't think we have this one either, reload, nope. So we need to create a new variable called reload time if no animation. So basically, and this is gonna be of type float. Basically, this is gonna be how long does the gun take to reload if there is no animation. It's gonna be editable. It's gonna be in category config config timing um, and we're gonna hit F7 to compile because its default value is gonna be somewhere around one second seems like a fair reload time and so we'll just plug that right into A so we'll choose between that or the actual uh, reload uh, animation duration um, so It chooses between those two and then we set um, I don't think we have this one either uh, set anim reload oh no okay right there that's our local variation right so we set that to the return value so however long the reload duration is depending on either whether it's based on the length of the animation or whether it's based on our um, little setup there if there is no if there is no um, animation um, then we're gonna do a set timer by function name that function name is gonna be stop reload um, it's not going to be looping the return value. We're going to set stop. Nope. We're going to need to create that too. So let's uh, add a variable called stop reload timer handle. It's going to be of the type timer handle. And that will be fine just the way it is. So yeah, we set. Whoops. We set that based on the return value. We also take this over here and we do a minus 0 0.1 off the reload um, duration. And then we do a max float between um, 0 0.1 one and it and then um, we do a switch has auth and if we have authority then we set timer by function name and before we get any further I want to do the stop reload function um, just so that, again, we don't miss something and have to go back at a later date because then stuff can really uh, get funky. So let's, uh, or then that can really take a lot of time. So let's create a new function called stop reload. We have start reload. We're going to need stop reload, obviously. So this is under events. has no inputs and outputs. So we go into a branch and we check if the current state is equal to reloading. So I'm gonna get rid of this config here. Is current state equal enum to reloading? If true, then we set B pending reload to false again. Remember we set it to true. Um, then we determine the weapon state again to see if we're still reloading or if we're firing or for idle determine weapon state and Then we I don't know if we have this stop weapon atom perfect. So we stop the you guessed it reload atom and that's that So we can compile so that functions good. So I'm happy that that's out of there. So stop reload um, I have another one coming up very soon though um, so this max return here is the time for this one and its function name is reload so it's the actual reload function um, and then we're going to need 
yeah, we're gonna need a new timer handle. So create a new variable called um, reload weapon timer handle. So the type timer handle, it's fine just that way. So we set that based on its return value. And that's the end of this function. So I'm gonna compile and then I wanna do the reload um, event. Um, it has to do with a lot of ammo, so lots of integers. So let's create a new function called reload. As you can see, we have fire, reload, holster, stuff like that. We have lots of stuff done, so we're getting there. Um, we need a local variable, first of all, called uh, L underscore reload amount. And that is going to be an integer set to zero. And so we're going to set that to, and this is where things get fun. And there's a branch after that also that uh, checks um, has infinite mag ammo. Reloading is different based on that, obviously. Um, so we want to do a min integer of um, two integer minuses. So we'll put one there and one there. Close enough for now. Come on, get in there. And we check um, up here, this one is ammo per meg minus current ammo in meg. The bottom one is current ammo minus current ammo in meg again um we check the min between those two numbers and um we're gonna need to reroute this because it's gonna be used so we'll put it up there um and whatever that amount is, we then want to do, well, let's do a, let's get current ammo in meg. Um, do that. And then we do an integer plus, plus the reload amount return value there. And then we get current ammo. And um, we want to do an int max. And this goes in the bottom and this goes in the top and so this branch if true um, we set uh, L reload amount local variable to that result right there um, might as well make it straight if false we go into another branch over here maybe i'll go down or up here to keep it clean or something i don't know um but we also set current ammo when you reload obviously you're not going to have as much ammo as you did before um and that is the max return value right there um next up so after we go so we go into this branch um both in false or after doing that and if true and its condition is um is l reload amount um greater than zero that's the condition um, if true, we set current ammo in meg to get current ammo in meg plus, and then this return value um, we'll plug into there, um, plus the reload amount local variable. And that's that. So, uh, and 
handles a reload, uh, what would you call that, uh, event. All right, so we can compile and save, and we can close that now because that function is done. I'm happy. I don't have to forget and then re wonder why is my weapon not reloading. Um, so this this one's done as well. So we can we can close this one. I'm pretty sure it's done. So start reload is done. So we can go back to handle firing. Um, so start reload, close that. So yeah, handle firing. So if true, we start reload. If false, we go into a two and sequence. And so what we're doing in that little bit there is uh, reload if able to otherwise. And then we go into our little two and sequence here. And this handles if our, if the owning pawn has no ammo. So we take our owning pawn and we check if it is valid as usual. Should almost just make a helper function for that and is locally controlled. So that's our uh, two and sequence. If true, we go into a sequence. So we're going to have three pins. First one's going to go into a branch. And the condition is going to be an and boolean. And the bottom one's going to be not uh, be refiring. So we're not refiring. Top one is get current ammo and is it equal comparison double equal sign be careful um, equal to zero um, if true then we do an is valid on uh, get owning pawn and then we use our helper function get casted controller and the controller out is the input object. We also want to get HUD. And we want to take that and cast to BP HUD, but only if out controller is valid. So if it is valid, um, we do an impure cast, then we cast to BP HUD and we take this and notify, we don't have that. We need to notify out of ammo. So that one is very easy too. So let's just, it's uh, one of those that can just be, um, it's, it's just an event that can be overridden if needed. So going to blueprints, let's find BP HUD and let's add a custom event called notify out of ammo and um, let's comment this and just say um, we can use this e this event to do something with the HUD or with a widget um, when out of ammo you could do like, uh, you could play like a beep beep sound and show like your ammo meter like flashing in red or something. But we'll compile and save that. And then we'll go back here now that we actually have that event. So as BP HUD, we notify out of ammo. Like so. All right, so um, first, so this is checking. Um, is is a uh, player firing without ammo, aka a dry fire, as it's known in the business and probably in real life. Um, and then next, we want to um, we want to stop showing all the uh, fire effects. So the next one in, we go into a branch again.
and its condition is we get a uh, get flash counter and check if it's greater than zero. So basically, have we done more than one shot? If you remember, that's what that counts. And if true, I don't think we have this one on weapon fire. Oh yeah, okay. Call function on weapon fire finished. So uh, this stops. Stop weapon firing effects. And then lastly, we want to auto reload when firing and we run out of ammo or tried firing an empty gun if player has auto reload on last shot enabled. Um, so the last one will go down to, I'm going to reroute it to keep it clean here. If I can, yeah, that'll fit in there. Um, we go into an is valid. Oops. That's what I should throw on a hotkey. That'd be, I don't think you can get a specific is valid though, because you could get multiple is valids if you try to type that in. They should really name that one differently because then, then you could, I could put on a hotkey. Anyways, um, enough rambling. Uh, owning pawn, get that. And we want to get casted controller. And that is what we're gonna check if it's valid. We're also gonna check if it is local player controller. We also wanna go over for that and we wanna check if the auto, oh, we don't have that set up yet. So let's go to BP player controller. Where are you BP player controller? And let's create a variable called B auto reload on last shot. And this will be a Boolean that's editable. It's going to go under config gameplay. Um, and by default, we want it to be true. So let's compile. Come on. And um, yeah, we want it to be true by default. And while we're here, um, actually, no, that should be all we need. So we can go back to weapon base. Now we can get B um, reload on last shot, auto reload on last shot, like so. And we need to create a variable here because I don't think we have reload last note. Let's create a new variable called uh, B supports auto reload on last shot. And this will be a Boolean. Uh, it'll be editable. It'll be under config firing. And we'll hit F7 to compile because we want that to be true by default as well. So bring that in and all of these go into an AND Boolean. Let's make an AND Boolean with an extra pin and plug those in. So if it is valid, we go into a branch. That's its condition, obviously. Let's see if we can bring this back here. And um, then we take off owning pawn, and I don't think we have it yet. Uh, try auto, no. So um, that one we don't need to really worry about right now. So we'll do that at a later date. We'll just leave ourselves a note because uh, auto reload is something that um, we can do much later down the road. So um, try auto reload from BP base character function goes here, but is not needed currently because we can reload on our own. So I'm not going to waste any time with it right now, but I am going to leave a note there. So I'm going to make a rewrote and a rewrote. All right. So, um, 
Oops. So let's comment this. Um, auto reload. Whoops. Caps is on. When firing and runs out of ammo or tried firing an empty gun, if player has auto reload on last shot enabled. Bring that down. Um, so that is that portion done. Um, it's, that's our sequence zero. Then we have sequence one and it's not exactly short either. Uh, might as well power through it, I guess. Why not, right? So we're gonna go into a two and sequence. Let's bring it all the way down here, two and sequence. So what we're gonna check is if our owning pawn is local and valid. So we take our owning pawn is valid, is locally, is locally controlled. If true, we go into a sequence. Just gonna have three pins. And this happens all the weapon, or this handles all the weapon logic after firing. So first of all, we do a switch has off. And we do server handle firing. So we need to go to our weapon state graph and do a custom event called server handle firing and this executes on server and is reliable um, it doesn't have an input and what it does is it calls handle handle firing and then it goes into a branch and that condition is current and uh, get current ammo in mag is greater than zero. And can fire. That's the condition. If true, we consume ammo. And then we set with notify flash counter to itself get flash counter plus one. There we go, compile that up and go back to handle firing. So we can call that now. So on remotes, only on client, we do server handle firing. All right, so uh, client uh, notifies server to handle firing weapon. And then we're gonna go into a five and sequence. which is going to check various things. We're going to get current ammo in meg and check if it is great or sorry, less than or equal to zero. We want to check if we can reload. And then we go into the third one, which is gonna be B support, so reload on last shot. And then four and five is based off of owning pawn, both uh, get casted controller and is the casted controller uh, valid is four and five is off of there, uh, B auto reload on last shot. And if true, all we do is a start reload. 
non-replicated. All right, so what we're doing here is um, auto reload on last shot or not. And then lastly, we handle refiring. So that's an automatic weapon um, when you're with like holding the, uh, the fire button down. So like holding the trigger down basically. So we are gonna do a rewrote so it's clean. We're gonna go and we're gonna set set B refiring based on um, an and boolean uh, with three pins. The bottom one is gonna be um, I don't think we have this yet. Time between, nope, let's create a new variable called time between shots. This is configurable for every gun. So this, this basically says how fast each gun fires. So it's gonna be a float, it's gonna be editable. It's gonna be under config timing. And we're gonna compile. By default, we'll make it uh, just over a tenth of a second, 0 0.125, how about that? Um, so we get that and we check if it is uh, uh, greater than zero. We're also gonna use this again, so let's reroute it up there. Um, and then this one goes into an or boolean, which checks if current state is firing or wound up. So current or double, double equal enum. So is it equal to firing or wound up? Foley, and uh, we also want to check the last one. We want to get B is automatic. So we set B refiring based on that, and then we go into a branch which uses that as its condition. And if false, um, we stop fire. If true, we set timer by function function name. And the time is the time between shots that we got. Um, the function name is this one, since you can't do delays, so handle firing. And then we take the return value and we set handle firing timer handle. So, zoom out, Han handles refiring, aka auto, automatic weapon fire. I think that's it. I think we got everything. Just gonna quickly go over it, make sure there's no things I forgot. Just through a quick look. I'm sure there'll be ears here and there, but when you have something so complicated, this is gonna be all right. So we can compile and that one is done. That's one of the more horrible functions. One of the, uh, one of the not fun ones. And that one uh, I did because I wanted on wind down started. I wanted that function done. So this function is done. Uh, set weapon state, that's where it all began. Uh, let's see if there's any we can do uh, in a row. So we were at on wind down started. Then we have on wind up started. We can do that one. So let's create a new function called on wind up started and this one we just set start wind 
set start wind time to get game time in seconds and then we um, simply set timer by function name that function name is handle firing return value we set handle firing timer handle uh, the time is wind up time so like so um, yeah and we want this categorized obviously this will be under events so let's compile and close I'm gonna throw this back here so that'll be true on wind up started um, and then we would have on holster finished here just kind of want to check that and make sure that we're in line. So that's condition for here. Yeah, holstered. Okay. So on wind up started, on holster finished is the next one. Um, on throw finished, we don't have that one, do we? On holster, we only have on holster. So new function on holster finished. This one's pretty easy too. Um, Put it under events so we go into a branch and we check if we're already holstered we don't want to do this before we're already holstered so b is holstered uh, if false we set uh, b pending holst oh not pending reload i thought we already had that b is pending holster if false we set that to false we set b is equipped to false set b is holstered to true uh then we got a lot more to do because we don't have these functions attach to owner holster nope well then we do a determine weapon state and then we do a, yeah, uh, we, then we take our owning pawn, we get a reference to self, and set holstered weapon. And that weapon is self, and drop existing is true. So in here we need attach to owner holster, which it's not a hard function, but it's more than I want to do right now. So I'm just gonna make a comment um, on, or sorry, um, attach to owner holster here. So we'll compile and save for next time. So yeah, we're we're getting there though. Um, we now have if we look at all, like if we look at our mechanics our states our visuals we have we have lots of we have all our visuals uh, um muzzle flash reloading animations stuff like that um we have mesh visibility based in third and first person we have weapon states we have reloading and firing we have dropping um uh we have winding up and down we have consuming ammo we have our ammo checks and reloading um so we're we're getting much much closer i assume one maybe two more uh at at the most i think i think we can get it done in one more hour though if we uh if we do another power through so thanks for watching again if you learned something please like the video subscribe as well we also take donations at paypal.me slash blender tech if you dislike this video please tell us why so we'll see you next time remember create your way